So, Ivor, still we keep guessing about some of the things in Zelensky program from his series. In the last uh, part, in the last season of his Servant of the People, uh, he's very. It looks like there is a very big criticism of the Western partners, and Ukraine and the IMF is pressuring, and the Western communities. There is a bit of the conspiracy around that pressuring Ukraine. How do you see that? With um, th th that's the message we have. That's the only message, more or less, we really have. Um, how do you see in the Western cooperation of Zelensky and the way it's portrayed in uh, his? Semi campaign. Well, in all honesty, I haven't seen uh, all the episodes of the last uh, uh, season, uh, but I will in the coming days. Uh, at the same time, I was one of the organizers of the meeting of Zelensky with business associations uh, just uh, a bit over a week ago, where he very clearly answered questions about uh, cooperation with the uh, IMF, among other things. Where he said, Look, in the TV series, we talk hard with IMF, well, we do understand that among others, IMF is a reform anchor in the country, uh, that uh, IMF uh, is very important for macroeconomic uh, stability, but both us and IMF would like to discontinue relationship when things improve in Ukraine and we repay back all the loans and so on. So uh, I would not uh, uh, over-dramatize uh, you know, uh, the situation with IMF. I think that uh, he very clearly understands. I hope also with my support and with the support of Danny Luke that IMF is there for a good reason and we need to continue cooperation with this institution. Still the question of course for the Western community is again about the relation of uh, Zelensky with Mr. Kalamoyski in particularly due to the policies of uh, Mr. Kalamoyski with international partners. What would you say on that? Do you receive any guarantees about the independence? What make you kind of join the, uh, the part of the team? Because so far the arguments we hear, they are the arguments. but. You know, like they're not still persuasive enough. Yeah. Well, if you uh, look at uh, uh, my activities as a minister and then it looks, uh, we had uh, some serious backlash personally with uh, Kalamoyski. Uh, but when it comes to Ukrainian politics, unfortunately, tradition over the last 30 years has been in place and remains that all big businesses are involved uh, in a major way in Ukrainian politics. Uh, so, does Kolomoisky like Poroshenko? No. Would Kolomoisky help uh, anyone who's, uh, who has a good chance of removing Poroshenko? I guess yes. Does he support with his media resources more than one candidate? Certainly. Do other tycoons, including uh, President-elect, uh, participate in a major way and support different candidates? That's a fact. Uh, so, uh, I believe that uh, Zelensky, as the President-elect, uh, has uh, uh, a very clear target to make his own presence a success. How he can achieve that by getting a very strong result in parliament elections? How he can get a very strong result in parliament elections? By doing a lot of good stuff uh, and not doing big mistakes in the first 100 days of his presidency. So, if a week or two weeks after being elected, he starts putting the so-called Kalamoyskis people uh, into very important positions. You understand what's going to happen to his support rate, and there's no way he's going to show a very good result in the parliament election. So I, I just think rationally that uh, uh, that a person who is elected for the top position in the country, that if he keeps getting good advice from some of his former friends uh, and business partners, then it's one thing. But if he starts to get bad advice, which would make his presidency unsuccessful, then I don't believe he would follow this bad advice. And, uh, and obviously another question the Western community is kind of concerned, how this politician without strong even like there would be foreign advisors would deal with international security and with dealing with such a tough and uh, professional politician as Vladimir Putin. Because a lot of people kind of can't imagine as somebody who was kind of playing gigs in front of the 
former Russian presidents uh, would talk seriously and would be regarded seriously by Russia? Look, uh, I think that uh, Poroshenko has been a poor president, uh, but I believe that he has had some success on the foreign policy front. Not uh, on all fronts, because we still have uh, Nord Stream 2 being constructed, which is a failure of, among other things, this foreign policy uh, uh, initiatives. But I would say uh, to you that uh, I have been observing uh, Kalamoyskis. Zelensky's uh, discussions with foreign diplomats in the last uh, two months. And I can tell you uh, that, uh, you know, uh, they enjoy some of the conversations that uh, he has had. Uh, and uh, I think they find some common ground and he has given some assurances uh, about his fight against corruption, about uh, a strong team that is in the making and about other initiatives. And we know that in the past few weeks, uh, President Poroshenko has done some serious mistakes, foreign policy mistakes, like uh, attack on the American ambassador, like uh, uh, Constitutional Court uh, ruling uh, illicit enrichment as unconstitutional. So foreign diplomats are losing patience with the incumbent president as well. And I think it would be refreshing to see a new face and start with a clean sheet. And I would still have final, and personally for you, because what I heard from foreigners, foreign diplomats, is that they trust Zelensky because you and Delinyuk are there. So how about this responsibility? Because it's more or less a lot thanks to... So do you trust him to this level that a lot of people from outside put the trust on him because you joined? Well, uh, if they trust me, I hope it's a result of uh, my performance as a minister. Uh, but uh, if he attracted us uh, as his advisors uh, for this particular stage, I think uh, there is every chance to believe that there is going to be more people like us in his team uh, in the future. Okay, thank you.